This is the story of a medical mystery that spans the globe. The story of parents who refused to give up until they had answers for their daughter, and the researchers who could be on the verge of a discovery that could change the world as we know it. I, I can't tell you how excited I am and how excited people should be. There's a lot of research being coming that, that will come out of this. It'll help future generations, absolutely. It's hope. There's hope there. And there, there was no hope before. This is beyond important. The, it's actually hope and it gives us strength every day. There are a lot of different forces at work here that uh, along with probably a fair amount of divine intervention that's happening here that that has brought us to this amazing place. It's all just a miracle. And, and the technology that exists now to allow this to happen. When Jordan was nine years old, we still had no diagnosis. And at that time, our neurologist here in Sacramento, Dr. Asaikar, he said there's one last test to do. And I coaxed Jordan's parents to have her genome sequenced. And we found something. Jordan had a uh, mutation. And about two months later, we got a phone call and learned that they had then identified six other children in the world at that time that had, in fact, been diagnosed with the same mutation and had similar or, or the same symptoms as Jordan. They then took that information to Dr. Wendy Chung at Columbia University Medical School and said, Wendy, we need you to look at this. We think we found something new here, and this could be pretty substantial. We have some very powerful new methods of genomic analysis, and we oftentimes try and address the question for a child that has either autism or developmental challenges, why did this happen? Could it be genetic? So we started doing that in a large number of children, and as we did this, we started to realize that there was not just one, but several children who had the same exact change in this gene, PPP2R5D. And that's when we started putting the pieces together and realizing that this was a new thing. And as we realized that and put the word out to let other people know about that, other people realized that their patients, that their children had the same condition. It is the light at the end of the tunnel. Once you know where the problem is, you can now start thinking of solving it. One of the things of which was that Cynthia and I had created a nonprofit foundation named after Jordan, Jordan's Guardian Angels. You know, we met with Dr. Chung <laughs> in New York to sort of lay out what the research would entail. He quickly understood the gravity of what I was saying. And then with Dr. Chung's help, he soon had the right people together. And boy, before I knew it, we were not walking, we were running. I get goosebumps as I talk about this. Getting the news about uh, PPP2R5D was a very bittersweet experience. We spent you know, the first two years searching for, a, for, a, for an underlying cause. We did every test under the planet. We met everybody under the planet that we could in the medical profession. We could finally stop searching. I hope that there will be a cure for these kiddos, but I also hope that that this research is going to help certain forms of cancer, you know, Alzheimer's, um, autism. So not just curing the kids that we know today, but curing other people in the world. It could be that there are yet unknown uh, diseases or conditions that could end up being helped by this research into this mutation, almost as if it were a kind of a treasure trove of medical science information and of course we're all thrilled with that. There's some incredibly promising technology that's coming up. That is of gene editing. Our genetic information is three billion alphabet letters. For these individuals there is one single letter out of three billion that needs to be changed. In theory, changing that one single letter would take care of the PPP problem. Potentially, if there is a way to do this for PPP, there is a way to do it also for a large number of other rare genetic disorders. And that's the hope many of us have for the future, is that this would be an absolutely pivotal technology to be able to bring forward, and we'd be a game changer for these families and many other families.
I connected uh, with Joe Lang uh, through Facebook. We had the group uh, together, we had the families, and he said, Carol, can we have a chat? I have a few things to talk with you about. Then he's like, oh, listen, uh, I met with Dr. Wendy Chung and there's this potential and let's work together. Our geneticist that diagnosed us actually said, here's the diagnosis we found. We don't know much about it, but there's a Facebook group which is not something doctors usually tell you. They don't send you to the internet when they give you a diagnosis. Well, it's really important. Um, for our family, I think that learning from the doctors, the specialists, also interacting with the other families that are here. Um, she got diagnosed a year and a half ago with the gene mutation, and the geneticist didn't really know much about any of it. So he told us to join the Facebook group. And so we joined the Facebook group and now are friends with 35 other families that um, have children just like her. One of the things that we were advised to do early on was to conduct a family conference, to bring as many families from around the world as we could to help them understand, to allow the researchers to have firsthand one-on-one -on -one evaluations with the children you know, most importantly, to gather the blood samples and saliva samples that are necessary to get the research started. And from the blood samples, we're going to be making those into what are called induced pluripotential stem cells, something from which we will be able to make mini brains in a dish, believe it or not, what we call organoids. We will be able to have those brain cells in the laboratory to study why does PPP do what it does, is there anything we can do with a medicine that we can actually add to a brain cell in a dish to make it work better? We were invited to be part of this uh, conference here in D.C. where people from all over the world have, have come here with basically the same thing or a variant of what Ella has. And we've never met anyone in her 12 years that's exactly like Ella and we're here with a bunch of people, families that have children that are exactly like Ella's. It's been such an amazing experience to get to meet these other families who essentially get it. They know exactly what we go through on a daily basis. I, I was really skeptical. Somebody was bringing us to specialists to learn about what, what they knew and to learn from us. Uh, we like um, the, the first day with uh, Professor Chang because she, she explained very well we know about it. It was uh, very interesting to, to, to hear what she had to say. In one of our posts, um, somebody posted a picture that their kid just had a haircut and the conversation started about kids not liking haircuts and stuff. And I'm a hairstylist and I said, hey, I'll bring my stuff and whoever wants to try, we can try. And we had a good turnout. This involves time, money, the right people, and we will solve this. You know, there are people that are willing and want to help and want to step up. It's just helping them to become aware and giving people opportunity, and, and that's what this is all about, and that's how helpful you can be. I think the project is actually way more than just us and just even these 34 other kids. I think for any other families that are fighting with this and it's so recent and anybody else that's new that comes comes into our group they'll know from the get-go of we've been blind we've been going through this whole journey not knowing what the next step was and hopefully that'll help with that and then again with with trying to find something that can help these kids we feel like we already know each other so just actually physically being able to give them a hug and say, we're here, we finally met each other, is so great. It's nice being all brought together when you see the families now with the really younger children. Mm. You know, they, they look at the bigger ones and they know, oh, she will walk. When we first got the letter to say they'd found something, I was just in tears. So yeah, I just said, right, we know what it is. I'm gonna get my tattoo. You know, we've gone so many years in the dark and this was just for me, just to mark the event that we'd finally found a home. Well, I just hope one day we can find a few answers. Uh, I don't know if we can do it with him, but maybe it helps some others along the way, you know. And, um, and he know that we've done all we could 
Yeah, just to be able to see her progress and to um, learn um, how to communicate better than what she can now. And it would mean the world to hear her say, you know, daddy or mommy, I love you or something like that. Something that simple. I would love to just have a conversation, a full on conversation with her. Something as, how did your day go today at school? And her being able to tell me. Hopes. It's, she's gonna be the best person in this world. And we're gonna put this hope in her, her hands. This will try to do it, gonna do. And she's gonna be fine. She started talking when she was 10 years old. I was helping her out of the pool and I carried her home and wrapped her in a towel and she said, I love you, mama. That was, <laughs> it was something like out of that world. The sky is the limit and uh, we hope to be able to help support her uh, to reach her potential, whatever that is. My hopes for George are pretty simple, just that he is as independent as possible and that he reaches his own potential, which whatever that may be. So we, we hope very, very much to help her that she will be um, more connected with uh, all the world. Wow, our kids are going to help change the world. That's pretty amazing that we're going to be able to be a part of that. This ends up being incredibly personal to me because I get to meet the families. I get to meet the individuals. And each one of them has a story to tell. I'm a very visual person actually having photos of these kids. I'm rooting for them, and I know they're depending on us. And so it, it does become personal because they're part of my extended family in terms of where we put our energies and our efforts. We really need to pay attention to this. This is not some obscure finding. The unraveling of this enzyme and the pathway and its cellular impact is going to affect mankind in a big, big way. The bigger the support we give this project, the faster we'll have an answer. It's a gift. We're blessed. Our children are blessed. We're blessed to have them in our lives. And now it looks like maybe the world is blessed to have them as well.